Apple Reminders is one of the most underrated productivity tools, but most people either overcomplicate it or overlook it completely. In this episode, I'll first show you everything this app can do to help you organize your life, and then I'll go through the simple way that I use it in my personal workflow. If you're new here, I'm Miles, and on this channel, I share how I'm building a more intentional life through systems, routines, and lessons I'm learning along the way. Right now, I'm working full-time and growing this YouTube channel on the side, and honestly, just trying to make the most of my life. But let's get started by going over what Apple Reminders is actually capable of. All right, so this is is Apple Reminders. We've got the side panel here with our different lists and kind of the actual tasks on the right here. You can easily hide the side panel like this. And starting with some basics, we can click add a list and maybe call it something like admin tasks. And there's a few different types of lists. We've got standard, groceries, and smart list. Standard is just a regular list. Groceries will automatically sort any items that you add to it into different grocery categories. So if you say um, add ground beef or something, it's going to put it into a meats section so that when you're in the grocery store, you can quickly get uh, things from the relevant section. It's actually very helpful. I use that quite a bit. Smart list. You can really do whatever you want with this. You can have the list automatically filter certain tasks by different properties, such as tags, if you use that. Dates. So let's say you want to have a smart list that filters all the tasks that you assign for yourself this week. You could do that here. You could filter it by flags or priorities or uh, include different lists within the smart list. It can get complicated or simple, however you want to use those filters. You can also change the colors. So let's maybe change this list to red. You can change icons. You can add a custom emoji. So you'll see the list shows up on this side panel here. You can pin a list to the top section as well. So if you have a bunch of lists and you have just like some important ones or maybe a smart list, you might, might want to pin it up at the top. I just have the inbox right now and the today list, but you can also just unpin it like that. So let's move some tasks from our inbox to our admin task list. I learned recently that you can click with two fingers and drag to so quickly select a bunch of tasks. Uh, that's a nice feature that they have that's a little more intuitive in things, but you can also do the same in Apple Reminders, which is awesome. And we can just drag it over to the admin list. And here we go. Now we have a bunch of tasks on here. When I create tasks, I usually add them to the inbox first, but of course, within that list, you can quickly add a task just like that by clicking new reminder. All right, so now that we have some tasks in our list, we can mess around with some of the settings for the list itself. The first one at the top here is view as columns. So this is a pretty cool one that turns the list into kind of a Kanban board style, um, Trello style board. And so we can create different columns and this can really depend on the type of list you're using for these admin tasks. The only thing I can really think of is maybe putting different locations where I have to do these admin tasks might be helpful, whether it's at home or something that I need to go out of the house for, or just looking at some of these, I have to buy a couple different things. So maybe I could have a column just for buy, and then I could take a couple of these items and we can move it to the buy section and now we just have them a little more organized so that way if i do like a one hour admin session i can just batch all the things that i need to order online and quickly do it all at once rather than splitting it up throughout multiple days i'm just going to undo this for now you can also just quickly undo things by hitting undo and we're going to go back to list view you can also change how you sort the list by either due date, creation date, priority, title. So that would do it like alphabetically, I imagine. So do it like creation date. So it really depends on your specific workflow. I feel like due date would probably make the most sense. And then here we have that save as template option. So let's say you have like a packing checklist you want to create and you, you want to be able to check things off, but easily redo that list. Anytime you're going to go travel, you could create a packing template and just reuse it when needed. All right, now let's go and customize an individual task itself. So let's say we do taxes. This is something that I actually still need to do. They're due pretty soon, like a couple of weeks, I think. You can click the info button and this is where you can customize the individual task. So you can add notes. So let's say I just need to remember a bunch of random things about doing taxes. I can write it there. Let's say I have the 
website that I want to use for taxes, which I guess is TurboTax. I don't really know what the best site is. I need to look into that because I just hate paying money to do taxes. It's, it's, it's kind of silly, but that's a rant for another video. You can put the URL in there. And I think once you do do that, do do, if I do like Google, google.com, it'll nicely hyperlink that under the task can obviously set a date for when the task will be due. So if you use the today tab or have any smart lists that are based on times, this is going to be pretty important. And you can also integrate it into Apple calendar, which I'll show you a little bit later. You can set a specific time if you want to get really specific. And it's something that is really important that you do at a certain time you can also set early reminders. So let's say you have something like do taxes, the hard deadline is, I don't know what it is, like April, first week of April, second week of April. I would maybe select the date as that, but then give myself an early reminder, you know, maybe the week before that I need to kind of get started and figure that stuff out. You can make tasks repeat. So if you have any sort of habit or recurring reminder that you need, you can set a repeat there. Tags, we can add hashtags to categorize different types of tasks. The only time I've really been using this is for my grocery list or shopping list. I will put a hashtag for the different store that I need to get it at. So certain things I want to buy at Costco, certain things I might buy at Whole Foods or just another H Mart or on Amazon. And that kind of helps me uh, batch those orders and, and shopping outings. You can also have it remind you when you get to a certain location or when you're messaging an individual. So a lot of this metadata is kind of a pain to uh, select on each individual task like this. Probably the best way to go about this, if you're going to go the extra mile and get really specific, would be to just tell Siri to do it. So say like, hey, Siri, remind me when I'm at this location to do this certain thing or when I'm messaging this contact do, to do this certain thing. My Siri just activated and it thinks I'm trying to talk to it. No, I'm not talking to you. That way you don't have to go through the hassle of like selecting all this stuff. You can flag different tasks, priority levels if you want to uh, kind of organize that way. And obviously the lists. You can also add images here. So if there's any image re related to your task, you can attach it like that. And you can also add subtasks. So let's say for due taxes, I need to figure out what website to use. Okay. I can drag this on to due taxes. And now it's kind of indented like a sub list. And let's say I want to add this one as well. You can also just slide it like that and it will indent. You can collapse this list with subtasks, get all fancy, however you like to do things. And when you're messing around with these different tasks, if you select one, you can also to quickly edit some of the metadata, select one of these icons at the top. So we can select the date very quickly here, location, you can flag it, unflag it, add tags, rather than having to go and like click the info sign and then go through all this. If you just want to quickly select the date, you can do it very quickly like that. Now, one of my favorite ways to use Apple reminders is for shared lists. So my girlfriend and I have a shared grocery list here, so you can share it with different people and you can have notifications when someone adds new items or completes items for anything that's kind of joint or, or shared as the name suggests, like groceries or any sort of household errands, things that we need to do. It's very helpful to keep track of this sort of joint to do list. And I, I do use this quite a bit and it updates pretty much instantaneously. Like I don't notice any lag between when she checks off a task and when it shows up on my device. Like if we're in the grocery store together and, and I get something, I can check it off and she knows not to get it because I already got it. It works pretty well. You can also get crazy and assign tasks to individual people. I haven't really used this that much, but if you know, you're sharing a list with a team or you want to delegate stuff amongst your family or whoever, uh, you can assign it as well. So you can keep track of who is in charge of what. And with your lists on the left hand side, you can also group them into folders if you have different sort of categories for lists and you can hide them away just like that. Same with the tags, which is pretty useful. Now, one of the biggest advantages of using a digital task manager like Apple reminders is the ability to quickly capture tasks and ideas into an inbox. It's one of the kind of classic productivity philosophies or pieces of advice. I think David Allen was one of the first to uh, kind of recommend that and getting things done. But there are a number of different ways to quickly capture tasks 
in app reminders one of the easiest ones is to actually use siri in the past this hasn't worked too well because siri kind of sucked siri is a bit better now with apple intelligence it can kind of listen to you and you can go back and forth you can also add shortcuts to leave on your home screen or lock screen to quickly add a task to your reminders inbox i have one of the newer iphones so there's this action button on the side and so when i click it this little window pops up just ask me what i want to add as a reminder i can just type it in like that and then at the end of the week or whenever i choose i can go back through that inbox delete probably most of the tasks because they're no longer relevant or kind of organize things as needed and of course apple reminders has an app on your phone and computer so it'll sync nicely and seamlessly between all of them because it's apple and they keep you trapped in their ecosystem one sort of new feature for you productivity nerds who want to get extra fancy is there is an integration between apple reminders and apple calendar now so when you schedule a task on apple calendar let's go to this one for example i need to get crushed tomatoes on monday specifically i really need them that day once i do that it will actually show up on my apple calendar on monday that i need to get crushed tomatoes i've also added a shortcut on my mac to quickly add reminders to my inbox so no matter what application i'm using at the time all i need to do is press command shift r and that same window will open up like on my iphone but on my mac i can add a task very quickly just like that all right now let's get how i personally incorporate apple reminders into my workflow and it's a lot simpler than you might expect now before we get into that if you've watched any of my other videos you'll know that i really enjoy using my ipad in a number of different contexts one of them being apple reminders it just looks great on this big screen especially if you go into the column mode like this works really well but honestly apple reminders works great on your phone or mac as well so what really sets my ipad apart from my other devices is the ability to write on it with my apple pencil the problem is that writing on the glass ipad screen used to feel slippery and unnatural so i didn't really do it but that all changed when i started using paperlike paperlike is a screen protector that gives your ipad a textured paper like feel its nano dots technology adds just the right amount of resistance for a more precise natural writing experience without sacrificing screen clarity whether I'm planning my day, journaling, taking notes, or capturing ideas, it just makes the whole process feel smooth and precise. Plus, Paperlike reduces glare and smudges, so your screen still looks crisp while giving you that tactile feel you'd expect from pen and paper. If you're ready to make the most of your iPad, check out Paperlike using the link in the description. They even offer a 100-day money-back guarantee, so you can try it out for yourself completely risk-free. All right, so as we've seen, Apple Reminders has all these great features and capabilities and can really do whatever you need a task manager to do. But how do I actually use Apple Reminders? Well, my system is extremely simple. Basically, when I think of a task, idea, something I need to remember for later, I will use one of a few different ways to quickly capture it into my Apple Reminders inbox. Most of the time, if I'm on the go, I use my phone's action button, as I showed you earlier. Sometimes I'll ask Siri to do it. Or if I'm on my computer, I'll use that shortcut or occasionally my Apple Watch. But one of those ways and throughout the day and week i'll just kind of capture a bunch of random things into my inbox and then either at the end of the day or at the very latest during my weekly review at the end of the week i'll go through this task inbox and sort through it most of the time i end up deleting a lot of the stuff because it's either not really relevant i just kind of captured it in the moment to get it out of my head and then i take another look at it and I'm like, I don't actually really need to do that. So I just delete it. I'm pretty ruthless about sorting through this task inbox and deleting things that I don't really need to do. But anything that's left over, I'll usually just move it to my admin task list. And then throughout the week, usually once a day, I'll try and schedule about an hour just to go through some admin tasks and i'll just open up that list and just try and get as many done during that one hour block as i possibly can and then as i alluded to earlier i do have a couple shared lists with my girlfriend one for grocery shopping and one for just various household errands that we need to take care of and for the grocery shopping one i will sometimes use the hashtags as i said to uh, indicate which store i need to get things from so i can make sure to get everything that I need from the specific 
store. Now you might be wondering now, okay, where's all your real work? Why keep things so simple when Apple Reminders has all these great features? Why not make lists for all the different areas of your life, color code them, add emojis, set up some repeated reminders and you know location-based reminders and add tags and, and do all this stuff? Well, I've tried all that before and the truth is I think it's all kind of pseudo productivity. So when you get really deep into organizing your task manager or any productivity app, it gives off the appearance that you have your life together and that you're being productive with your time, but it's really just kind of giving you almost a dopamine hit and making you feel like you're being productive without having to actually put the work in. So most of the important deep work that contributes directly to my main goals in life, I actually just organized mainly on paper these days because I just don't want any of the distractions that come with these technological devices and feel the need to use any of these extra features that these task managers or productivity apps offer because although they can be great and if they work well for you and meet your needs in life by all means keep using them but for me they were just kind of a distraction and didn't actually help me get any better at doing the work. I think actually being productive and getting important work done shouldn't really feel as easy as it is to organize a bunch of lists and color code things and set up recurring reminders. It can definitely be fun, but it should be sort of the same feeling that you get with working out where it's it's kind of painful in the moment there's a little bit of resistance but as you're you know in the flow it feels better and when you're done you feel relieved it feels great like you actually did something i think the reason why so many people myself included can get quickly obsessed over finding the optimal way to use and set up these productivity apps is because it appears productive when you do all this stuff, but it's actually easier to do than the actual tasks themselves. It took me a while to realize this, probably too long to be perfectly honest. So hopefully by watching this video and hearing me talk about my mistakes, it will help you kind of come to that conclusion a bit faster. But since then, I've been taking a much simpler approach to productivity where I focus primarily on execution and tangible output. And it's honestly been a complete game changer. If you want to learn more about the productivity and execution system that I use to actually get the important things done in my life, I break it down in this episode here. Have a great rest of your week. I'll see you in the next episode.